Welcome once again to Help, I'm a Parent, Christian Parenting in the Real World. We're so happy that you have invited us to enter into your home, your church, or wherever you may be gathered today. Perhaps you're viewing this alone or as a couple, or with a small group of friends, or maybe even with a large church group or online. Wherever you are today, we're delighted that you have joined us on this program. We are your hosts, Drs. Claudio and Pamela Consuegra. Together we serve as the Directors of Family Ministries for the North American Division of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. We believe that the most important role you will ever play is being a parent to your child. God has entrusted you with a treasure more precious than anything else you could ever own. Today's parents are dealing with issues that their own parents never had to face. Digital media is a cultural change that did not enter into our world until the end of the last century. Media is not a passing fad, but instead it is now the fabric of our culture. As with many things, technology has proven to be both a blessing and a curse. Our children's lives are infused with contacts, conversations, and information that many parents feel are out of their control. Some parents readily admit that their child sees things in media that they should not be seeing. Some parents also have a sense that they should be doing more, but they're not certain how to get a handle on media and the digital world that has invaded their children's lives. In fact, many parents feel as if their attempts to control the use of media are a total failure. So should parents just admit defeat? Do we throw our hands up in the air and give up? We can all probably admit that Satan is using media to influence our lives and our homes today in ways in which we've never dreamed. It even affects the youngest child. It is the parent's role to guide their children to understand the influence of media and the importance of making right choices. We want to thank you for joining us on today's topic. Stay with us as we discuss this. Today we're going to be talking about the challenge of raising children in the digital age. Who is raising our kids today? Does media play a bigger role in developing my child's character than I do as a parent? How do we parent our kids in this digital world. This is a big challenge and to help us explore this topic, we've invited a very special guest. Our guest today is Dr. Rose Gamblin. She is the president of MRG Media Ministries and writes and produces two weekly radio shows for Life Talk Radio, one of them Homeschool Companion and the other one Education Currents. She was a passionate person about helping the orphan and impoverished child and serves as vice president for Restore a Child. She also serves on the Adventist Child Care Network a Board of Directors where she helped to develop media guidelines for infants and toddlers. Dr. Gamblin, thank you so much for being here with us. It's an, a, a joy and a pleasure to have you here because you have great knowledge that we need to learn today as parents in this digital media age. Thank you for having me. We're delighted to have you here. Before we jump into our topic today, let's take a look inside the home of the Mead family. And they're going to talk with us about the specific challenges they face as a family in managing media. As a parent of two young children, when I think about social media and the bombardment that they are getting all around them at school and even at home, I have a lot of concerns about what kind of limits to put in place and to manage all of it just to protect uh, my children and help them to grow up in a Christian way. If they start playing games right away when we get home, uh, it's almost like they go into a, it's not a coma, but there's a different uh, thinking process that goes on. And then when we try to break them of that, uh, it's almost as if there's a, there's a meltdown that goes on because the mind is, it's not functioning the same. 
uh, when you're in conversation with them. Um, so uh, that's where we came up with a 10 minute rule because when it was longer, 10 minute, an hour or so, it was very difficult to entertain them with something else besides a game. With our phones and the iPad just, just being in the house, it's very easy for the kids to just pick them up, um, look at something. They've gotten very good at going to Google and putting in something they want to look at, which right now um, is just usually toys, American Girl or Lego. But I realize it will be very easy for them to, with the touch screen, just click on something that pops up. Um, that I wouldn't want them to. And it is a concern because I'm not constantly looking at the screen when they are looking at the screen. What is socially appropriate for your children? You know, how do you take what the media portrays as acceptable and bring them back to your core values? There's really a line there that you can't control. You can't control the commercials and what's shown in the commercials. You can't control, and it's intertwined into Hollywood. How far, where, where do you draw the line? Some good questions, huh? Mm. Some very good questions, <laughs> but some big challenges. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. So, you know, let's start by defining media as it relates to the young child, birth to seven, what are we really talking about when we talk about managing media? Well, I think that we're talking about technology, we're talking about television, we're talking about anything that is electronically driven. Yeah. We have more than just the time spent, we have gamma rays going into their systems that are impacting their future health and we have all that information going, and it's a, impacting quite a few systems in the brain. And I hope as we mm -hmm. have this discussion, we can talk about the different systems that it is impacting. You know, I have to confess, I grew up watching TV, although a limited amount compared to what they do today, and it was black and white yes, too. Yes, you know? yes, yes. <laughs> At the same time, there were times when I would have to ask my daughters to program the VCR mm -hmm. or the TV because they know so much more. So mm -hmm. are we saying that we should have no technology whatsoever at home? Well, uh, the researchers now are saying we've been digitally invaded. Mm -hmm. We can't get, we, we have been digitally invaded. That's a fact. I'm an immigrant. You're an immigrant to this digital world. Yes. But our grandchildren are natives. So mm -hmm. I got a smartphone two years ago. <laughs> I was not smart enough to work it, so I gave it to my grandchild, and they oh. programmed it for me and so that at least I could make calls and have a few fun little games on it. But the sad thing is the next time they saw me was, oh, hi, Grandma. Hi. Can I play with your phone? Oh, yes. they were not so anxious yes. to see you about to see your phone. It already had impacted our relationship. But how did they learn at such a young mm -hmm. age to use this technology? Well, I really don't know, except that we're just exposed to it. Their mm -hmm. parents already more advanced in this um, immigration process, so yeah. to speak, had yeah. more devices than I had. And so the children were born with these devices mm -hmm. in their home. Uh -huh. And so we are, we've been digitally invaded. We can't get around that. So it how do we navigate? It part of nature from day one, basically. Yes. It, right. In fact, if we look at the zero to two, that, that age group, that child is, their dendrites are just flourishing. They have an abundance of these neuroreceptors in their brain, more than they will have at any other time in their life. And then as they grow older and they're not using certain dendrites or neuroreceptors, right. the body trims them off like trimming a tree. Huh. Mm -hmm. So this is where the danger comes for a zero to two year old child. If we aren't giving them the opportunity to learn that nuance in language, as far as picking up social nuances, maybe they're spending more time in the digital world than they are in the real world. They're communicating right. through text. So we know now from brain research that this digital world is changing our brains. Huh. Mm -hmm. and, awesome. and that's why in our video clip, we heard the father say, you know, when, when they're engaged in yeah. media, it's almost like they're in a coma. Yes. So I, I think 
I, you know, I hear you saying that when we talk about the impact on the brain. Yes. Can, can you describe that, that a little more? That is actually talk about that? talking or speaking to the part of our brain that we call the pleasure center. And the pleasure center, you know, God gave us that. He mm. created us for His joy. We are to be joyful. But when we over bombard it, over it, it gets to the point where we don't find joy mm -hmm. in that mm. interesting little frog that's hopping along or right. in that beautiful creative scene of the water and the trees. We don't enjoy it because we are, we are so overly stimulated. Mm -hmm. And this is particularly danger dangerous for the young child who mm. is getting bombarded with whatever, you know, angry birds running over and over mm. and banging each other and things crashing down, or uh, just the beautiful psychedelic experience of what the digital world brings to us. So, so you have a child that's playing, say, with an iPad, and they have the, the games and they move, and you know, you talk about the angry birds, and then you give them a book, and what happens? Are you saying then that they're not interested in the books because they're not as active as the iPad figures are? Is that what you're trying to say? Well, often that is the case. You know, I've seen that happen with my own grandchildren. I think what's happening here is the brain, its, its pleasure center can be overstimulated and that's where the seeds of addiction start in that overstimulation where our our brains weren't made to have so much pleasure, uh, artificial pleasure, bombarding it. I, I have mm -hmm. to stop you there <laughs> because you, you said a word that is of concern to me, the seeds of addiction. So mm -hmm. are, are you saying that when children are overstimulated by the media, that could lead into addiction, not just to media, but other addictions? Yes, and it's very, it's very intertwined because Yes, it's speaking to the pleasure center of the brain, mm -hmm. but it is also speaking to the attachment center of the brain. God designed us to attach emotionally to other human beings, and when we are attaching to this artificial media, so to mm. speak, we mm -hmm. aren't having that opportunity. For young children, it's very important to develop those strong attachments to our parents, to our siblings. So instead, if we've developed an attachment to this <laughs> angry bird, mm -hmm. sure. we have lost that. And and just as I spoke earlier, when uh, the two-year-old has this rich dendritic thing and it's being trimmed off, how do we get that back again? Mm. And, and what is they've the answer? lost it. Oh, so you're saying they're lost it? Yes, I'm saying that I would recommend huh. that zero to two-year-olds two, year, two year olds not be in front of screens. And yet, yeah. Here's the problem. Here's the challenge. <laughs> yes. If I'm a young parent today, I have a two-year-old and I have a newborn that needs my constant care. And let's be real. It is so easy to allow media to be my babysitter. It mm -hmm. is. Mm -hmm. It's free. It's available. Mm -hmm. And so it's so easy while I'm taking care of my infant to give my 18-month-old or my two-year-old to either put them in front of the television set, put a DVD in, or give them an iPad, mm. even, yes. you know, and let them play. And I think that's, that's the challenge. And all of, us, all of us have done that. I mean, I've done that with my grandchildren. Mm -hmm. uh, it's been the pacifier, or maybe they were getting noisy mm -hmm. in church, and I handed them my iPhone to play a quiet game so that I could listen to the sermon. We even have <laughs> Sabbath school materials that yes. are for the iPad or the iPhone. So oh it's, it is a matter of balance. It really is. We are, we have the digital world. We're not going to be able to uh, get rid of it, but we need to understand. And so if I'm understanding how the brain works and I realize that, hey, this also is impacting the memory system mm -hmm. because now we really, don't need those cells to memorize things. We can Google everything. But I well, think what you said is so important, you know, and, and yeah. I don't want to miss it. What you said a, a minute ago is that we give them the iPad because it's easier for me. Yes. Mm. I give, I put them in front of the television because it's easier for me as a parent when in reality, that may be true. Mm. It may be easier for me but in the process of making my life easier, yeah. I'm damaging my child yeah. for the future. 
Right, and, and I think that's what I hear you say. Yes, and it's not the Christian world that's saying, whoa, whoa, there's some serious problems here. It's the brain researchers, it's the psychologists. They're the ones that are rising up and saying, hey, we need to stop and take a second look at this because at one point we were embracing it so much. Yeah. We wanted our children to read by the mm -hmm. time they were three. And guess what? With these tools, many of them do read. Yes. Many of them do simple arithmetic and they know the names of sure. every shape and dinosaur, but it's at a tremendous cost down the road to yeah. how their relationships are formed yeah. and how their memory works and if they can really do their independence. So, so we're going to have to talk about steps or uh, ideas that we can give mm -hmm. our parents to control media and we're going to do that right after we come back from a break. You can probably already tell that we will not be able to cover every area, every concern, or every question you may have with just one parenting resource. Parenting will continue to produce new challenges and questions every day. As our children grow and change, so do the parenting challenges. Our goal is to continue this conversation with up-to-date resources and parenting tools. We will do this online via our website. There, you will find out about any updates to these materials. And in addition, you will receive downloadable resources on a regular basis. It's our desire that this resource will assist you in your God-given role as a parent using principles that are firmly grounded in the Word of God. So now let's go back to our conversation with our guests on today's program as we continue on the journey of exploring our God-given role of parenting. Welcome back to our conversation with Dr. Rose Gamblin. We've been talking about the effect of media, especially on the brain of the young child, and we want to continue to explore that and also things that parents can do specifically to help their children to use media in a positive way. You know, Rose, one thing that our parents face today is that even if I try to manage it in my home, reality is media is all around us. You know, if my child goes and spends the night at a friend's house, mm -hmm. when they get older, they, ha they have pe their peer group, they go spend the yeah, night. Yeah. Or maybe even in a mall, parents tell us, you know, m my child sees things in the mall or in the store on the television set that I don't allow in my home. So we need to give our parents some practical tools. What are some practical steps our parents can take to help them deal with media? Well, the first thing every parent should do is develop their own media management system. It could be a card that they could write down the steps. I will not be on the I will not be on my smartphone when the children are in the room. I, for themselves, yes, not for the for kids. Themselves. So rules okay. for the parents, yes, not for the yes. kids. That's a great idea. <laughs> so you make mm -hmm. your own plan. And I did this myself and it has been such a blessing because when we are so tuned in to technology and all mm -hmm. of the things, we lose that God space. Mm -hmm. yes. And God speaks to us in that still small voice. Mm -hmm. And we need to get that back again. Uh, our digital world has made us so much more busier than we ever were before. So when the parent says, oh, I'm so busy, yes, I mm -hmm. handed them that, it's because we've just bombarded ourselves with information. And so we need to make our own media management plan. Mm. And then that can be adapted in that each child, at, what, at whatever developmental age they are, mm -hmm. they have a media mm -hmm. plan. Mm. So you're not sitting in, in the family That's room a great idea. <laughs> all together yeah. and everybody's on their electronic devices. I mean, we've all done mm -hmm. that and we've laughed about it. You know, we've had family reunions and we're all sitting there, you know, maybe even texting mm -hmm. each other on digital devices. You, you, you almost <laughs> see a theme in our different sessions here. It's the parents' example. That's right. Mm -hmm. When we provide an example, our children follow by our example. Yes. So it is, it is it a easier. thread that connects all of yes. these, right. actually. Now, there is something that, that you mentioned, and, and I guess we really haven't talked about, and it's the spiritual effect. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so uh, we recognize the change in the brain structure. Now, you mentioned mm -hmm. that, maybe even the emotional makeup. How does that affect the child's spirituality using mm -hmm. media? Well, we, we know that if that child hasn't developed a good attachment system or knows how to attach, that that will, will also be part of the deficit in their spiritual 
attachment to God. Mm. Okay. And we we also recognize, even if we aren't a Christian, let's say, we recognize that the child has a spiritual uh, domain to them that everything else really is couched under. Right. Mm -hmm. right. And that brings them joy, it brings them peace, tranquility, meaning in life. And so we want them to be balanced. Mm -hmm. That's the good word, balance. balance. I remember yes. the meets in their video talked about 10 minute yeah, limit. Yeah, I thought that was And great. so in that media managing, uh, management mm -hmm. program, uh, you would suggest then a balance between yes. say, some of the media and what? What would be the balance to spending time with the media? Well, spending time in uh, as a family playing a, mm -hmm. a table game. Mm -hmm. a table Great game. idea. <laughs> yeah. And you know, I've done this with my grandkids and did it with my kids. And they remember those times when we got out Monopoly or mm -hmm. Sorry. And, because it's not and, just yeah. a game, it's that connection again yes. with human beings. Yes. Ah, and that's they, a they're great just idea. desperate mm -hmm. for it because sure. God wired us. He, got, he wired us with a God hole that is first filled with the relationships of our family right. and then later with Him as we mature. So then again, balance the, the time with technology, with Tim, a time mm -hmm. with the family, yes. time to play, time to communicate. W what else can be done or what, what else can the parents do to control uh, the amount of time that our children spend with media? Well, I think as children become older, they'll have their own cell phones and uh, and parents, you might not be the most popular person on <laughs> <laughs> on the planet when you have these rules. Everybody <laughs> has right. one. That's Am right. I the only one? Yes. <laughs> Everyone's doing it. How yes. come I can't? Or, or what if when my child starts kindergarten or first grade, because this age group is, is there, <laughs> and then they want to go to a friend's house. How can I be assured as a parent or are there steps I need to take to be sure that my child is going to be exposed to media yes. that our family has, has determined that's acceptable? What are some things that I can do? Well, I think as the idea of having media management plans on a family basis and maybe a school-wide management plan, church management plan, I, I cannot tell you how many churches have inadvertently allowed their young people to access hmm. uh, inappropriate sure. material because they didn't have the proper safeguards on their internet service. Hmm. And so all parents can be very proactive because it's, we're really bringing in a very sinful environment mm -hmm. into our children without meaning to because we're not quite, you know, we're digital immigrants, they're mm -hmm. digital natives, and they can always circumvent some of the safeguards mm -hmm. if we're now, not Certainly, careful. we're not saying that, again, all media is bad. Right. I can think of, you know, sometimes they have programs for to help the kids in, in case mm -hmm. they get lost. And, of mm -hmm. course, we're talking about mm -hmm. children birth to age seven, and so we know of parents who've provided a cell phone with a simple yes. program that locates the children yes. in case they're mm -hmm. lost. What other things are, is media good for? What are the positive sites of media? Well, for academics, the media has really hmm. helped hmm. children. Children with special needs have really benefited sure. from it. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And uh, we, you know, our children are coming into kindergarten ready to read or reading. Right, right. They know basic math mm -hmm. facts, yeah. a lot of things that they've learned from television, uh, the, the tablet programs. There are so mm -hmm. many blessings. We just have to, as with any good thing, and you know, as, as we were talking, I couldn't help, I, I have to mention this. Steve Jobs, I read his biography, okay. and this was, this was a very creative man, ex-hippie, mm -hmm. grew up in mm -hmm. that era. Mm -hmm. In his biography, he says, you know, I loved LSD. I loved the psychedelic colors. Mm -hmm. He goes, I wanted to make sure that any product I developed had that same beauty and that same attraction to it. And when I read that, which had nothing to do with, with anything at the, at the time, but for me, it began, the dots began to connect. Mm -hmm. That yes, he had created uh, some really beautifully attractive 
experiences. Without the ill effects of the... Uh, yeah, without the ill effects of the drug, the but at the drug, same yeah. time, we need to be careful because we want to protect our children from an addictive environment. We want to protect them from the bad things that are out there right, and so right. readily yes. available. Well, and the other uh, resource that I know is good, you know, the Grace Links. Uh, it used to be that we had the fail sets. Now we can have fail sets mm -hmm. on yes. the iPad, so that it is good in a, uh, from the spiritual point mm -hmm. of view. Uh, so there are some good things. Skyping your relatives when they happen yes. to be far yes. away, your grandparents or your uh, relatives. So those mm -hmm. those are good things that mm -hmm. media can be used for. Yes. Yes, no. with any wonderful creation, you know, on this sinful earth, Satan has found a way to That's contaminate so it. So we That's as so parents true. and educators, we just want to protect our children and at the same time we want them to benefit from every yeah. technological resource yeah. that there is. It's using the time appropriately. That's not right. Not just simply giving the mm -hmm. uh, media free reign in their lives. That's right. Yeah. Well, we want to just thank you from the bottom of our hearts for being here with us today. Mm -hmm. This whole area of media has really risen to the top of parents yes. as, as we surveyed yes. and talked to them about their challenges. Media was right at the top. Yes. So we want to thank you, Rose, for being mm -hmm. with us today thank and you. sharing with us some practical ideas of how to manage this in our home. And we want to thank you also for joining us as we have explored some of the challenges of parenting today. We invite you to visit our parenting website, www.helpimaparent.org. And there you will find many additional resources and materials to help you manage media in your home. When you feel like screaming out, help, I'm a parent, claim God's promise. Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Regardless of the challenges of parenting, God is with you. You're not alone. Reach out, claim his promises, and take his hand and journey together. Join us next time on Help, I'm a Parent, Christian Parenting in the Real World, when we will talk about ways in which we can help our children make healthy choices. But until then, we invite you as a parent to cling to your Heavenly Father.